stoichiometry and we're going to look at basic stoichiometry so we're not getting into solving for limiting reactants we'll do that in another video so stoichiometry essentially is the quantitative study of reactants and products and technically speaking if it's in stoichiometric quantities you'll have the exact amount of reactants reacting with each other to give you a particular amount of products we're just going to refer to any quantitative analysis of reactions as stoichiometry so taking one thing one reactant and converting it into a particular product but within a chemical equation you could be using any of the species within the equation so you can go from reactant to product to find the amount of a reactant and use that to find the amount of product or you could go from one reactant to another or you could go from product to reactant. so at any one term in a balanced chemical equation can be used to find out the amount of the any other term in that chemical equation that is needed to carry out that reaction that is what we're going to call stoichiometry so as a an example of how this would work as an analogy how to work um, anytime you have a process of producing something um, there's going to be inputs and outputs and so making a sandwich is going to have ingredients as the inputs so these things here and then you get your sandwich as the output think of that as a chemical reaction we have our reactants on the left we have our products on the right they combine in a particular ratio and then they produce a certain amount of products in this case we're only making one particular product and a chemical reaction make more than one product and different ratios for each product for this particular one if you're making a perfect cold cut trio sandwich there are two pieces of bread that go into it three cold cuts five pieces of lettuce four tomatoes and that produces one sandwich so if um, someone showed up at the restaurant they asked for five of these sandwiches here you can do the math in your head as to how much you would need of each ingredient but we'll set it up we're using conversion factors as our analogy for how chemical reactions will be done using stoichiometry or solved using stoichiometry so if you particularly wanted to know how many pieces of lettuce would i need to make five cold cut trio sandwiches you can look at the ratio and again we have five pieces of lettuce per sandwich so in our head we can do the math but if we set it up as a conversion factor we can continue to use that method for other things like chemical reactions so we have a particular quantity given to us five sandwiches that's what we're working with so we set up our conversion factor where we're using our ratios from the process itself or what we'll be looking at from the chemical reaction and since we want to cancel out the units of sandwiches that is the denominator we use in our conversion factor the numerator is the thing that we are trying to get to from our question and then sandwiches cancel out our units of lettuce carry through and then our mass says five times five gives us 25 so we know that we're going to need 25 pieces of lettuce that's essentially how we're going to do stoichiometry but we'll be doing it with um, actual chemical reactions instead so first off let's look at these mole ratios that we're going to be seeing in chemical reactions so the mole ratio uses the balance and again you got to make sure you get your equations balanced balanced chemical equation to convert moles of one thing and again we're saying species here that could be an atom or a molecule or formula or ion whatever the things are you know, the terms in the chemical reactions equation and we can convert from moles of one thing to moles of another we're going to use these ratios the, the balanced chemical equations coefficients as conversion factors so for example magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide nice synthesis reaction so if you write the balanced chemical equation from that you have two moles of magnesium reacting with every one mole of oxygen so we have a two that's not a two there's a two um, two to one to two ratio um, for this particular reaction so if 15 atoms of magnesium reacted how many and this is this is a, a ionic compound we're talking formula units here and so since 15 atoms of magnesium react how many formula units of magnesium oxide are going to be produced and so we can set this up and again you can do this math in your head but we want to go through the process so you can do it when it gets harder 15 atoms we want to be able to cancel them out so we set up a conversion factor that says okay for every two of these atoms that's where we're getting this bottom number from the atoms of magnesium and there are two these ones here formula units of magnesium oxide being produced so that's where we're getting our let's make this a little bit more obvious two formula units of magnesium is coming from the two coefficient in front of the magnesium oxide and the two atoms of magnesium is coming from the two as the coefficient for the magnesium at the beginning of the reaction so that is our conversion factor so just like any other conversion factors we set it up so that we get the units we want to to cancel out the units we are looking for to carry through but 
The only difference is this isn't an Avogadro ratio, um, Avogadro's number ratio. This is not a molar mass ratio. This is a mole ratio, which we're getting from the balanced chemical equation. It works the same as other conversion factors, but allows us to convert from one thing in a reaction to some other thing within the reaction. That's a mole to mole conversion factor. And when we're talking about the individual pieces, so here we're talking about atoms and formula units, if we were to talk about moles of those things, because they are a direct ratio to each other, it's just a multiple of 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Um, so if we talked 15 moles of magnesium, how many moles of magnesium oxide would we produce? It's still a two to two ratio or one to one ratio. And so again, the moles of magnesium would cancel out if we wanted to get rid of those. And our moles of magnesium oxide would carry through to our answer. And we would be able to find out and convert between the moles of things with any balanced chemical equation as well. So those coefficients in the chemical equation are going to be used as conversion factors. They are representative of the individual species that we're dealing with there, like the atoms and the formula units. But they are also, because it's a direct comparison, also representative of the actual moles of those particles as well. All right, so let's try part B of this cold cut trio sandwich example using mass and see how we can add that to our conversions to actually translate um, not just the number of something different into um, another species, another type of thing. So, for example, cold cuts over to sandwiches. We've done that. Um, or actually, we did lettuces or sandwiches to lettuce. Now we're actually going to do the conversion between these two. But often we are going to be measuring things not in amounts because you can't actually measure out a certain amount of particles are too small. There'd be too many of them. So we measure them instead as masses. And so we're going to be trying to find out how much a given day, how many cold cuts a given day you would actually go through when you're actually making these sandwiches. So knowing that each piece of cold cut weighs 10 grams, and again, if, if you read that, that, that's each piece, so you're talking about one of these pieces of cold cut weighing 10 grams, that's a ratio, that's the ratio we're gonna be using. We wanna know within a given day, if you're getting like 38 orders of these sandwiches, how many cold cuts would you have to sign up for from your cold cut delivery service? Um, how many would you actually order each day? And because they're, they're selling these cold cuts, they're not gonna count them out for you. They would sell you a certain mass of them. So we actually want to convert to a mass of cold cuts for that particular day. So we're gonna start with the number given to us at 38 sandwiches. And so this 38 sandwiches is ordered on a given day. We know that each of these sandwiches is going to use three cold cuts in it. So we can convert from sandwiches to cold cuts using our one to three ratio from our chemical, uh, not chemical equation, our sandwich equation here. Um, and so this is like a mole ratio within a chemical reaction. There is three cold cuts used for one sandwich. So we're using those into our ratio here. Three cold cuts. We know sandwiches goes on the bottom because that's what we want to cancel out. That will get us to how many cold cuts we go through per day, but again, the person who comes and delivers a cold cut doesn't want to have to count them out. They're going to weigh out a certain mass of them. And so we're going to then have to use a conversion factor that will convert from the number of cold cuts. So we put that on the bottom of our next conversion factor. And we know that each one weighs 10 grams. So that's showing up in there. Cold cuts cancels out. We're going to have units of grams carrying through to our answer. And we will then have our answer there in grams at 1140 grams of cold cuts used per day. So we have taken sandwiches and we've converted two number of cold cuts in the first one and in the second one we have converted from the amount of cold cuts if we've got the answer there in the middle it'd be the amount of cold cuts and we have now converted them to the actual mass of cold cut meat that you'd have to order so every day this shop is going to go through 1140 grams now significant digits we do have a measured value in here of three significant digits so we want our answer to be in three significant digits we could put that in scientific notation but what sort of cold cut company is going to know I want to use scientific notation. So instead we use the metric system and put that into kilograms. We get our three sig digs and a nice readable answer. So the type of stoichiometry that we're going to do for the most part at the beginning anyways, um, is going to be mass to mass problems. So we're going to start with the mass of a reactant and we're generally going to be solving for a mass of a product, but we could also find the mass of another reactant or we could start with the mass of the product and go backwards. But generally we're, we're very easy for us to measure in masses so we tend to be solving for that a lot especially for solids 
So this generally involves finding the mass or being given the mass of something that goes through a reaction, and then you then have to find the mass of something else in the reaction, generally a product. First thing to do, you have to have a balanced chemical equation. This is the situation that you're talking about. If you're talking about a reaction, you have to have the balanced chemical equation to know what the ratio of things, species are and how they are reacting. So start with that. Then we're going to take the mass that's given. So this is like the, the initial mass here of something in there, generally a reactant. Um, and then we're going to convert it to moles. Because if we want to use the balanced chemical equation, that is in a molar ratio or an atom ratio or, or a particle ratio. But again, um, we're going to be talking moles here. So we want to convert the known mass that we have into moles. We will then use the moles of one thing and a conversion factor, and this, this is from the balanced chemical equation. That's why you have to have the balanced chemical equation to cancel out the moles of the thing we started with and go to the moles of the thing we are looking for. So we're using that mole ratio from the equation. That's the only new part to the stoichiometry. We're using the same method as we were before. We're using conversion factors. We know how to convert between particles and moles. We know how to convert between mass and moles and vice versa for both of those. And now using a balanced chemical equation, we can convert from moles of one thing to moles of another thing. Then convert from that moles of the thing you're looking for generally into mass. You don't always have to go to mass. They might just be asking you for moles and you'd be done in that case. But again, if we want to weigh out this or we want to know how much we're going to be getting in mass, um, we generally are going to be converting to mass at the end. If it is going to be a solid for something like gases, we've got to do a little bit more work and solutions as well. So let's try out a couple of examples and go through this. So metabolism um, is this long, complicated whole set of reactions that we have here. Um, and some part of it involves taking glucose and breaking it down into carbon dioxide and water by reacting with oxygen. So like, I don't know, this part right here, I think that's, don't have my glasses with me, but um, I think that part is the, the metabolism of, of glucose. And so what we want to know is if you have 10 grams of glucose, what mass of water, so those we're starting with a mass, but we're starting with a mass of glucose, it's going to go through a reaction. We're going to be producing something else, water, and we want to know the mass of that water. So again, first thing first, set up the balanced chemical equation. So try doing that. And what you should have is one glucose reacts with six oxygens to form six carbon dioxide and six waters. So that is our balanced chemical equation. That's always the first step of any stoichiometry that you want to do. Start with that. Then we're going to take our mass of our known substance. And again, this is the glucose. So we're going to take our 10 grams of glucose and I'm going to write a label of gluc on it so that I can keep track of it and I can see when it switches from one thing to another because I'll be using different masses of different things. So if I put a label on them as a little subscript, I can keep track of those as I go through this. So 10 grams of glucose. Um, now I want to find water, right? So I'm starting in glucose and I've got to convert over to water. And you can't just say, well, that's a one to six ratio. So I'm just going to multiply 10 by six and get 60 grams of water. Because remember the ratio that we're talking in and for the balanced chemical equation, that is not a mass ratio. That is a mole ratio. So if you want to use it, fair three, but you have to be in moles to do that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to convert our mass. We're going to go to moles and then we can use our mole ratio and go to from moles of glucose to moles of water. And then we've got to come back out again and the question is asking for mass because it's sort of easier to picture how much that would be in, in actual grams. And so we're going to convert finally to mass. So three conversion factors. First one, we use the molar mass of glucose to cancel out the grams of glucose. So we're now talking moles of glucose. Once we have done that, so that is our first conversion factor, and that's just the molar mass of glucose, and we're using that to get to the moles of glucose. So that gets us into the actual balanced chemical equation, gets us talking the language of moles. Then we're taking one thing and we're converting it to another thing. That's where we use our mole ratio. And again, since we're, we're, we've canceled out grams of glucose, we're now in moles of glucose. So for our next conversion factor, moles of glucose is going to go on the bottom. And it is a one to six ratio here. And so moles of glucose on the bottom is going to cancel out. So I will now be talking in moles of water. Now I could stop there. That does tell me how much water is produced. But again, the question is asking for mass. So what I will do is I will cancel out moles of water and go to mass of water by using my last conversion factor that gets rid of moles and goes to mass. And that will carry through to my answer. 
And now I can pick up my calculator and actually figure out what the math, the, what the numbers would be. I figured out how the units are going to work um, by setting those up. I've set up the numbers and now I can plug them into the calculator. 10 times 1 divided by 180.818 times 6 divided by 1 times 18.02 divided by 1 if you want. And you should end up with 6.00 grams of water being produced from 10 grams of glucose. All right, so with this one, we have a thermite reaction. This is where you have powdered aluminum, hopefully you don't, um, with iron three oxide reacting. It's a single displacement reaction happening between two solids. And you can see it over here on the side here. That's why we're watching a video of it. Um, and so the question is asking what mass of aluminum oxide is produced when this much, 5.40 grams of aluminum, react with excess iron three oxide. So single displacement reaction, the aluminum and the iron are going to switch places. We end up with molten iron being produced and then that aluminum oxide left over. So first step, write the balanced chemical equation. Let's see if you can get that done before I put it up here. And hopefully you have that. Again, liquid iron uh, produced. Make sure it is balanced. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to take our 5.4 grams of aluminum. Again, start with the amount of stuff that you have. That is 5.4 grams of aluminum, and we're going to convert that. So that is aluminum that we're going to be bringing over to aluminum oxide. Now, we, we can't just do a 2 to 1 ratio because this is mass, so we have to turn it into moles using the molar mass of aluminum. And again, this is 26.98 grams of aluminum. That is the mass of one mole. So you might be wondering, well, if we look at the actual equation here we're, we're talking about two moles of aluminum going through the reaction that is a separate thing this molar mass ratio that we're using right here we're getting from the, the from the periodic table and the molar mass is defined as the mass of one mole so we are using one mole as our numerator and we see from the periodic table that one mole of aluminum weighs 26.98 grams a separate fact is that for this particular reaction we have two moles of aluminum and it goes to produce through this particular reaction one mole of aluminum oxide so that is where we're getting our second ratio from and that is where we actually see the molar ratio when you're using the molar masses we are talking about a single mole and then we do our mole to mole ratio from our balanced chemical equation that will be particular for the particular reaction that you're talking about now the question is asking for the mass of aluminum oxide and so we want to this would give us the moles of aluminum oxide we want to use the molar mass again and it is one mole of aluminum oxide that we're, we're doing not because the equation has one mole that's a separate issue this is the molar mass conversion factor and as molar mass is defined molar mass is defined that is the mass of one mole so run that through our grams of aluminum cancel out, moles of aluminum cancel out. We transfer over to moles of aluminum oxide, which we also cancel out to get us to grams of aluminum oxide. Plug it into your calculator, and we should this time get the correct answer of 10.2 grams of aluminum oxide.